kindergarten friends. I hope this finds you well. I am going to read to you The Dinosaurs Before Dark. I know we started it in the library at school, but I wasn't sure if you guys would remember what we had read, so I'm just going to start over and reread it to you. I hope you enjoy. Chapter One, Into the Woods. Help, a monster, said Annie. Yeah, sure, said Jack. A real monster in Frog Creek, Pennsylvania. Run, Jack, said Annie. She ran up the road. Oh, brother, this is what he got for spending time with his seven-year-old sister. Annie loved pretend stuff, but Jack was eight and a half. He liked real things. Watch out, Jack, the monster's coming. Race you. No thanks, said Jack. Annie raced alone into the woods. Jack looked at the sky. The sun was about to set. Come on, Annie, it's time to go home. But Annie had disappeared. Jack waited. No Annie. Annie, he shouted again. Jack, Jack, come here. Jack groaned. This better be good, he said. Jack left the road and headed into the woods. The trees were lit with a golden late afternoon light. Come here, cried Annie. There she was, standing under a tall oak tree. Look. Look, she said. She was pointing at a rope ladder. The longest rope ladder Jack had ever seen. Wow, he whispered. The ladder went all the way up to the top of the tree. There at the top was a tree house. It was tucked behind two branches. That must be the highest tree house in the world, said Annie. Who built it, asked Jack. I've never seen it before. I don't know, but I'm going up, said Annie. No, we don't know who it belongs to, said Jack. Just for a teeny minute, said Annie. She started up the ladder. Annie, come back. She kept climbing. Jack sighed. Annie, it's almost dark. We have to go home. Annie disappeared inside the treehouse. Annie! Jack waited a moment. He was about to call again when Annie poked her head out the treehouse window. Books! She shouted. What? It's filled with books! Oh man! Jack loved books. He pushed his glasses into place. He gripped the sides of the rope ladder and up he went. Chapter 2 The Monster Jack crawled through a hole in the treehouse floor. Wow, the tree was filled with books. Books everywhere. Very old books with dusty covers. New books with shiny bright covers. Look, you can see far, far away, said Annie. She was peering out the treehouse window. Jack looked out the window with her. Down below were the tops of the trees. In the distance, he saw the Fog Creek Library, the elementary school, the park. Annie pointed in the other direction. There's our house, she said. Sure enough, their white wooden house with the green porch. Next door was the neighbor's black dog, Henry. He looked very tiny. Hi, Henry, shouted Annie. Shush, said Jack. We're not supposed to be up here. He glanced around the treehouse. I wonder who owns all these books, he said. He noticed bookmarks were sticking out of many of them. I like this one, said Annie. She held up a book with a castle on the cover. Here's a book about Pennsylvania, said Jack. He turned to the page with the bookmark. Hey, it's a picture of Frog Creek in here, said Jack. It's a picture of these woods. Oh, here's a book for you, said Annie. She held up a book about dinosaurs. A blue silk bookmark was sticking out of it. Let me see it. Jack set down his backpack and grabbed the book from her. You look at that one. I'll look at the one about castles, said Annie. No, we better not, said Jack. We don't know who these books belong to. But even as she, he said this, Jack opened the dinosaur book to where the bookmark was. He couldn't help himself. He turned to a picture of an ancient flying reptile, the pteranodon. He touched the huge bat-like wings. Wow, whispered Jack. I wish I could see a pteranodon for real. Jack studied the picture of the odd-looking creature soaring through the sky. Ah, screamed Annie. What, 
said Jack. A monster, Annie cried. She pointed to the treehouse window. Stop pretending, Annie, said Jack. No, really, said Annie. Jack looked out the window. A giant creature was gliding above the treetops. He had a long, weird crest on the back of his head, a skinny beak, and a huge bat-like wings. It was a real live pteranodon. The creature curved through the sky. He was coming straight towards the treehouse. He looked like a glider plane. The wind began to blow. The leaves trembled. Suddenly, the creature soared up high into the sky. Jack nearly fell out of the window trying to see it. The wind picked up. It was whistling now. The treehouse started to spin. What's happening, cried Jack. Get down, shouted Annie. She pulled him back from the window. The treehouse was spinning faster and faster. Jack squeezed his eyes shut. He held on to Annie. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Jack opened his eyes. Sunlight slanted through the window. There was Annie, the books, his backpack. The treehouse was still high up in an oak tree, but it wasn't the same oak tree. Chapter three, where is here? Jack looked out the window. He looked down at the picture in the book. He looked back out the window. The world outside and the world in the picture, they were exactly the same. The pteranodon was soaring through the sky. The ground was covered with ferns and tall grass. There was a winding stream, a sloping hill, and volcanoes in the distance. Ooh, where are we? stammered Jack. The pteranodon glided down to the base of their tree. The creature coasted to the stop and stood very still. What happened to us, said Annie. She looked at Jack. He looked at her. I don't know, said Jack. I was looking at the picture book. And you said, wow, I wish I could see a pteranodon for real, said Annie. Yeah. And then we saw one in the Frog Creek Woods, said Jack. Yeah. And then the wind got loud and the treehouse started spinning, said Annie. And we landed here, said Jack. And we landed here, said Annie. So that means, said Jack. So that means, what, said Annie. Nothing, said Jack. He shook his head. None of this can be real. Annie looked out the window again. But he's real, she said. He's very real. Jack looked out the window at her. The pteranodon was standing at the base of the oak tree, like a guard. His giant wings were spread out on either side of him. Hi, shouted Annie. Shush, said Jack. We're not supposed to be here. But where is here, said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. Hi, Annie called again to the creature. The pteranodon looked up at them. Where is here, Annie called down. You're nuts. He can't talk, said Jack but maybe the book can tell us. Jack looked back at the book. He read the words under the picture. This flying reptile lived in the Cretaceous period. It vanished 65 million years ago. No, impossible. It couldn't have landed in a time 65 million years ago. Jack, said Annie, he's nice, nice. Yeah, I can tell. Let's go down and talk to him. Talk to him. Annie started down the rope ladder. Hey, shouted Jack. But Annie kept going. Are you crazy, Jack called. Annie dropped to the ground. She stepped boldly up to the ancient creature. Chapter four, Henry. Jack gasped at Annie, held out her hand. Oh, brother, she was always trying to make friends with animals. But this was going too far. Don't get too close to him, Annie. Annie touched the pteranodon's crest. She stroked his neck. She was talking to him. What in the world was she saying? Jack took a deep breath. Okay, he would go down. It would be good to examine the creature. Take notes, like a scientist. Jack started down the rope ladder. 
When he got to the ground, Jack was only a few feet away from the creature. The creature stared at Jack. His eyes were bright and alert. He's soft, Jack, said Annie. He feels like Henry. Jack snorted. He's no dog, Annie. Feel him, Jack, said Annie. Jack didn't move. Don't think, Jack, just do it. Jack stepped forward. He put his arm out very cautiously. He brushed his hand down the creature's neck. Interesting. A thin layer of fuzz covered the Trinidad skin. Soft, huh? said Annie. Jack reached into his backpack and pulled out a pencil and a fuzzy notebook. He wrote, fuzzy skin. What are you doing? asked Annie. Taking notes, said Jack. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live Pteranodon. Jack looked at the Pteranodon again. The creature had a bony crest on the top of his head. The crest was longer than Jack's arm. I wonder how smart he is, Jack said. Very smart, said Annie. Don't count on it, said Jack. His brain's probably no bigger than a bean. No, he's very smart. I can feel it, said Annie. I'm gonna call him Henry. Jack wrote in his small notebook, small brain, question mark. Jack looked at the creature again. Maybe he's a mutant, he said. The creature tilted his head. Annie laughed. He's no mutant, Jack. Well, what's he doing here then? Where is this place, said Jack. Annie leaned closer to the Drenodon. Do you know where we are, Henry, she asked softly. The creature fixed his eyes on Annie. His long jaws were opening and closing, like a giant pair of scissors. Are you trying to talk to me, Henry? asked Annie. Forget it, Annie, Jack wrote in his notebook. Mouth like scissors, question mark. Did he come to the time long ago, Henry? asked Annie. Is this a place from long ago? Suddenly she gasped, Jack! He looked up. Annie was pointing toward the hill on top stood a huge dinosaur. Chapter five, Gold in the Grass. Go, go, said Jack. He threw his notebook into his backpack. He pushed Annie toward the rope ladder. Bye, Henry, she said. Go, said Jack. He gave Annie a big push. Quit it, she said. But she started up the ladder. Jack scrambled after her. They tumbled into the treehouse. They were panting as they looked out the window at the dinosaur. He was standing on the hilltop, eating flowers off a tree. Oh man, Jack whispered. We are in a long time ago. The dinosaur looked like a huge rhinoceros, only he had three horns instead of one. Two long ones above his eyes and one on his nose. He had a big shield-like thing behind his head. Triceratops, said Jack. Does he eat people, whispered Annie. I'll look it up, Jack grabbed the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. There, he said. He pointed to the picture of the Triceratops. He read the caption. The triceratops lived in the late Cretaceous period. This plant-eating dinosaur weighed over 12,000 pounds. Jack slammed the book shut. Just plants, no meat. Let's go see them, said Annie. Are you not, said Jack. Don't you want to take notes about him, asked Annie. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live Triceratops. Jack sighed, she was right. Let's go, he said. He shoved the dinosaur book into his backpack. He slung it over his shoulder and started down the ladder. On the way down, Jack stopped. He called up to Annie. Just promise you won't pet him. I promise. Promise you won't kiss him. I promise. Promise you won't talk to him. I promise. Promise you won't. Go, go, she said. Jack went. Annie followed. When they started off or stepped off the ladder, the Pteranodon gave them a kind of look. Annie blew a kiss at him. Be back soon, Henry, she said cheerfully. Shush, said Jack, 
and he led the way through the ferns, slowly and carefully. When he reached the bottom of the hill, he kneeled beside a fat bush. Annie knelt beside him and started to speak. Shush! Jack put his finger to his lips. Annie made a face. Jack peeked out at the triceratops. The dinosaur was incredibly big, bigger than a truck. He was eating the flowers off a mangolia tree. Jack slipped his notebook out of his back. He wrote, eats flowers. Annie nudged him. Jack ignored her. He studied the triceratops again. He wrote, eats slowly. Annie nudged him harder. Jack looked at her. Annie pointed to herself. She walked her fingers through the air. She pointed to the dinosaur. She smiled. Was she teasing? She waved at Jack. Jack started to grab her. She laughed and jumped away. She fell into the grass in full view of the triceratops. Get back, whispered Jack. Too late, the big dinosaur had spotted Annie. He grazed down at her from the hilltop. Half of a Mongolia flower was sticking out of his mouth. Oops, said Annie. Get back, Jack shouted at her. He looks nice, Jack. Nice? Watch out for his horns, Annie. No, he's nice, Jack. Nice? But the triceratops just gazed calmly, calmly down at Annie. Then he turned and loped away down the side of the hill. Bye, said Annie. She turned back to Jack. See? Jack grunted. But he wrote in his notebook, nice. Come on, let's look around some more, said Annie. As Jack started after Annie, he saw something glittering in the tall grass. He reached out and picked up a medallion, a gold medallion. A letter was engraved on the medallion, a fancy M. Oh man, someone came here before us, Jack said softly. Chapter six, Dinosaur Valley. Annie, look at this, Jack called. Look what I found. Annie had gone up to the chill trap. She was busy picking flowers from the angolia tree. Annie, look, a medallion. But Annie wasn't paying attention to Jack. She was staring at something on the other side of the hill. Oh, wow, she said. Annie, clutching her mangolia flowers, she took off down the hill. Annie, come back, Jack shouted. But Annie had disappeared. I'm going to get her, Jack muttered. He stuffed the gold medallion into his jeans pocket. Then he heard Annie shriek. Annie? Jack heard another sound as well. A deep bellow sound, like a tuba. Jack, come here, Annie called. Annie? Jack grabbed his backpack and raced up the hill. When he got to the top, he gasped. The valley below was filled with nests, big nests made out of mud, and the nests were filled with tiny dinosaurs. Annie was crouching next to one of the nests, and standing over her was a gigantic duck-billed dinosaur. Don't panic, don't move, said Jack. He stepped slowly down the hill towards Annie. A huge dinosaur was towering above Annie, waving her arms, making her tuba sound. Jack stopped. He didn't want to get too close. He knelt on the ground. Okay, move towards me. Slowly, he said. Annie started to stand up. Don't stand, crawl, said Jack. Clutching her flower, Annie crawled toward Jack. The duck-billed dinosaur followed her, still bellowing. Annie froze. Keep going, Jack said softly. Annie started crawling again. Jack inched farther down the hill until he was just an arm's distance from Annie. He reached out and grabbed her hand. He pulled Annie toward him. Stay down, he said. He crouched next to her. Bow your head. Pretend to chew. Chew? Yes, I read that's what you do if a mean dog comes at you. She's no dog, Jack, said Annie. Just chew, said Jack. Jack and Annie both bowed down their heads and began pretending to chew. Soon, the dinosaur grew quiet. Jack raised his head. I don't think she's mad anymore, he said. 
Thanks, Jack, for saving me, said Annie. You have to use your brain, said Jack. You can't just go running to a nest of babies. There's always a mother nearby. Annie stood up. Annie! Too late. Annie held out her Mongolia flowers to the dinosaur. I'm sorry I made you worried about your baby, she said. The dinosaur moved closer to Annie. She grabbed the flowers from her. She reached for another. No more, said Annie. The dinosaur let out a sad tuba sound. But there are more flowers up here, Annie said. She pointed to the top of the hill. I'll get you some. Annie hurried up the hill. The dinosaur waddled after her. Jack quickly examined the babies. Some were crawling out of their nest. Where were other mothers? Jack took out the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. He found a page with a picture of some duck-billed dinosaurs. He read the caption. The Antiosaurus lived in colonies. While a few mothers babysat the nests, others hunted for food. So there must be more mothers close by. Hey, Jack, Annie called. Jack looked up. Annie was at the top of the hill, feeding Mongolia flowers to the giant Antosaurus. She's nice too, Jack, said Annie. But suddenly the Antosaurus made her terrible tuba sound. Annie crouched down and started to chew. The dinosaur barged down the hill. She seemed afraid of something. Jack put the book down on top of his pack and hurried to Annie. I wonder why she ran away, said Annie. We were starting to be friends. Jack looked around. What he saw in the distance almost made him throw up. An enormous, ugly monster was coming across the plain. He was walking on two big legs and swinging a long, thick tail and dangling two tiny arms. He had a huge head and his jaws were wide open. Even from far away, Jack could see his long, gleaming teeth. Tyrannosaurus Rex, said Jack. Chapter 7. Ready, set, go. Run, Annie, run, cried Jack to the treehouse. They dashed down the hill together, through the tall grass, through the ferns, past the pterodon and right to the rope ladder. They scrambled up. Seconds later, they tumbled into the treehouse. Annie leaped to the window. He's going away, she said, panting. Jack pushed his glasses into place. He looked through the window with her. The Tyrannosaurus was wandering off, but then the monster stopped and turned around. Duck, said Annie. The two of them hutched down. After a long moment, they raised their heads they peeked out again. Coast clear, said Jack. Yay, whispered Annie. We have to get out of here, said Jack. We made a wish before, said Annie. I wish we could go back to Frog Creek, said Jack. Nothing happened. I wish, wait. You were looking at a picture in the dinosaur book, remember? The dinosaur book. Jack groaned. Oh, no. I left the book and my backpack on the hill. I have to go back. Oh, forget it, said Annie. I can't, said Jack. The book doesn't belong to us. Plus my notebook in my backpack with all my notes. Hurry, said Annie. Jack hurried down the rope ladder. He leaped to the ground. He raced past the pteranodon, through the ferns, through the tall grass, and up the hill. He looked down. There was his pack. Lying on the ground, on top of it was the dinosaur book. But now the valley below was filled with Andiosauruses, all standing guard around the nest. Where had they been? Did fear of the Tyrannosaurus send them home? Jack took a deep breath. Ready, set, go. He charged down the hill. He leaped to his backpack. He scooped it up. He grabbed up the dinosaur book. A terrible tuba sound, another and another. All the Antiosauruses were blowing at him. Jack took off. He raced up to the hilltop. He started down the hill. He stopped. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was back, and he was standing between Jack and the treehouse.
a chapter eight, a giant shadow. Jack jumped behind the Mongolia tree. His heart was beating so fast he could hardly think. He peeked out at the giant monster. The horrible looking creature was opening and closing his huge jaws. His teeth were as big as steak knives. Don't panic, think. Jack peered down at the valley. Good, the duck-billed dinosaurs were sticking close to their nests. Jack looked back at the Tyrannosaurus. Good, the monster still didn't seem to know he was there. Don't panic, think, think. Maybe there's information in the book. Jack opened the dinosaur book. He found Tyrannosaurus rex. He read, Tyrannosaurus rex was the largest meat-eating land animal of all time. If it were alive today, it would eat meat. A human in one bite. Great! The book was no help at all. Okay, he couldn't hide on the other side of the hill. The Antiosauruses might stampede. Okay, he couldn't run to the treehouse. The Tyrannosaurus might run faster. Okay, maybe he should just wait. Wait for the monster to leave. Jack peeked around the tree. The Tyrannosaurus had wandered closer to the hill. Something caught Jack's eye. Annie was coming down the rope ladder. Was she nuts? What was she doing? Jack watched Annie hop off the ladder. She went straight to the Tranodon. She was talking to him. She was flapping her arms. She pointed at Jack, at the sky, at the treehouse. She was nuts. Go, go back up the tree, Jack whispered, go. Suddenly, Jack heard a roar. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was looking in his direction. Jack hit the ground. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was coming toward the hill. Jack felt the ground shaking. Should he run, crawl back into Dinosaur Valley, climb the Mongolia tree? Just then, a giant shadow covered Jack. He looked up. The Tyrannodon was gliding overhead. The giant creature sailed down toward the top of the hill. He was coming straight for Jack. Chapter nine, the amazing ride. The Tyrannodon coasted down the ground, to the ground. He stared at Jack with his bright, alert eyes. What was Jack supposed to do? Climb on? But I'm too heavy, thought Jack. Don't think. Just do it. Jack looked at the Tyrannosaurus. He was starting up the hill. His giant teeth were flashing in the sunlight. Okay, don't think, just do it. Jack put his book in his backpack. Then he eased down onto the Tyrannosaurus back. He held on tightly. The creature moved forward. He spread out his wings and lifted off the ground. They teetered this way, then that. Jack nearly fell off. The Tyrannodon steadied himself then rose into the sky. Jack looked down. The Tyrannorex was chomping the air, staring up at him. The Tyrannodon glided away. He sailed over the hilltop. He circled over the valley, over all the nests filled with babies, over all the giant duck-billed dinosaurs. Then the Tyrannosaurus soared out over the plain, over the Triceratops, who was grazing in the high grass. It was amazing was a miracle. Jack felt like a bird, as light as a feather. The wind was rushing through his hair. The air smelled sweet and fresh. He whooped, he laughed, he couldn't believe it. He was riding on the back of an ancient flying reptile. The Tranodon sailed over the stream, over the ferns and bushes. Then he carried Jack down to the base of the oak tree. When they came to a stop, Jack slid off the creature's back and landed on the ground. Then the Tranodon took off again and glided into the sky. Bye, Henry, whispered Jack. Are you okay? And he shouted from the treehouse. Jack pushed his glasses into place. He kept staring up at the Tranodon. Jack, are you okay? And he called. Jack looked up at Annie, he smiled. Thanks for saving my life, he said. That was really fun. Climb up, said Annie. Jack tried to stand. His legs were wobbly. He felt a bit dizzy. Hurry, shouted Annie. He's coming. Jack looked around. The T-Rex was headed straight towards him. 
Jack bolted to the ladder. He grabbed the sides and started up. Hurry, hurry, screamed Annie. Jack scrambled into the treehouse. He's coming towards the tree, Annie cried. Suddenly, something slammed against the oak tree. The treehouse shook like a leaf. Jack and Annie tumbled into the books. Make a wish, cried Annie. We need the book. The one with the picture of Frog Creek, said Jack. Where is it? He pushed some books aside. He had to find the book about Pennsylvania. There it was. He grabbed it and tore through it, looking for the photograph of Frog Creek Woods. He found it. Jack pointed to the picture. I wish I could go home, he shouted. The wind began to moan softly at first. Hurry, Jack yelled. The wind picked up. It was whistling now. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Jack closed his eyes. He held on tightly to Annie. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Chapter 10, Home Before Dark. A bird began to sing. Jack's eyes opened. He was still pointing at the picture of Frog Creek. He peeked out the treehouse window. Outside, he saw the exact same view. We're home, whispered Annie. The woods were lit with a golden late afternoon light. The sun was about to set. No time had passed since they'd left. Jack, Annie, a voice called from a distance. That's mom, said Annie, pointing. Jack saw their mother far away. She was standing in front of their house. She looked very tiny. Annie, Jack, she called. Annie stuck her hood up head out the window and shouted, coming. Jack still felt dazed. He just stared at Annie. What happened to us, he said. We took a trip in a magic tree house, said Annie. But it's the same time as we had left, said Jack. Annie shrugged. And how did it take us so far, said Jack, and so long ago? You just looked at a book and you said you wished we could go there, said Annie. And the magic trios took us there. But how, said Jack. And who built this magic treehouse? Who put all these books here? A magic person, I guess, said Annie. A magic person? Oh, look, said Jack. I almost forgot about this. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a gold medallion. Someone lost that lost this back there. In dinosaur land, look, there's a letter M on it. Annie's eyes got round. You think M stands for magic person, she said? I don't know, said Jack. I just know someone went to that place before us. Jack, Annie, came the distance cry again. Annie poked her head out the window. Coming, she shouted. Jack put the gold medallion back in his pocket. He pulled the dinosaur book out of his backpack and put it back with all the other books. Then he and Annie took one last look around the treehouse. Goodbye, house, whispered Annie. Jack slung his backpack over his shoulders. He pointed at the ladder. Annie started down. Jack followed. Seconds later, they hopped onto the ground and started walking out of the woods. No one's going to believe our story, said Jack. So let's not tell anyone, said Annie. Dad won't believe it, said Jack. He'll say it was a dream, said Annie. Mom won't believe it, said Jack. She'll say it was pretend. My teacher won't believe it, said Jack. She'll say we're nuts, said Annie. We better not tell anybody, said Jack. I already said that, said Annie. Jack sighed. I think I'm starting not to believe in myself, he said. They left the woods and started up the road towards their house. As they walked past all the hoses on their street, the trip to the dinosaur time did seem more and more like a dream. Only this world and this time seemed real. Jack reached into his pocket and clasped the gold medallion. He felt the engraving of the letter M. It made Jack's fingers tingle. Jack laughed. Suddenly he felt very happy. He couldn't explain what had happened today, but he knew for sure that their trip in the magic tree house had been real absolutely real. Tomorrow, Jack said softly, we'll go back to the woods. Of course, said Annie. And we'll climb up to the treehouse, said Jack. Of course, said Annie. 
and we'll see what happens next, said Jack. Of course, said Annie. Race you. And they took off together running for home. The end. I hope you and guys remembered some parts of that book and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day and God bless.